and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in San Diego. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Saturday, March 2nd. Welcome to your bonus episode. Counting up on today's show, we'll get right into the surf report and the weather outlook. Then we'll jump into the recap of all the best news from the week in sports, tech, business, cryptocurrency, science, and entertainment. And here's the surf report. A storm system is bringing a sloppy northwest swell mix over the weekend, peaking into early Sunday. By mid next week, expect smaller surf with cleaner conditions and a new northwest swell mix on the horizon. Saturday in Ocean Beach and South San Diego, it's looking real bad. Unless you can get out there with some glow sticks at 1 a.m., then you're out of luck until Wednesday morning. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. But when one door closes, another opens. More time for yoga, stretching, and sleeping in. The first high tide Saturday will be four and a half feet, eight minutes after midnight, with a one foot low tide at 8.30 a.m. And that's all she wrote for tides on Saturday. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 61 degrees for the water temperature. Checking out the weather in the San Diego area. This morning, it's rainy and 59 degrees with 10 mile per hour wind. The sunset will take place at 5.47 p.m. and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.13 a.m. It looks like we're in for a rainy day with a high near 63 and wind of 10 to 15 mile per hour with gusts as high as 20. Chance of precipitation is 70% with new rain amounts of less than a tenth of an inch. Tonight, a chance of rain, mostly cloudy with a low around 53 and wind around 10 mile per hour with gusts as high as 20. Looking ahead in the weather, we'll see a chance of morning showers on Sunday, then partly sunny skies with a high near 62. Wind will be west around 10 mile per hour, gusting to 20. Sunday night, a slight chance of showers before 10 p.m., then mostly cloudy with a low around 51 degrees. Monday and Tuesday will be mostly sunny with highs in the low 60. Nights will be mostly cloudy with lows around 50. Wednesday brings a slight chance of rain with partly sunny skies and a high near 63 degrees. Now here's the top local news from the week. In Oceanside, a developer has proposed a transformative project for the North Coast Highway. This six-story building, featuring 275 apartments, an underground parking garage, and ground floor commercial spaces, is planned for a historically significant site. Previously hosting the Roadway Inn and the iconic Flying Bridge restaurant, frequented by celebrities like Bing Crosby and Ronald Reagan, the site is known for its scenic views over the San Luis Rey River and Oceanside Harbor. The new proposal follows previous plans for a Marriott Hotel and a Hyatt Place Hotel with condominiums, which were never realized. The development aims to offer a range of apartment sizes and amenities, aligning with the city's inclusionary housing ordinance to provide affordable housing options. This project is part of Oceanside's broader Coast Highway vision and strategic plan, enhancing the area with high-density housing and improved infrastructure. San Diego is still experiencing a notable increase in remote work, as revealed by a survey from the San Diego Association of Governments. In 2024, 46% of employees are expected to work from home at least once a week a 7% rise from 2023. This trend is consistent across various industries, income levels, and languages. Additionally, 53% of businesses in the city are planning to offer remote work options in 2024. This data was compiled by True North Research for the Remote Work Policies and Practices Survey. The San Diego Unified School District is confronting a significant financial challenge with a $94 million budget shortfall for the upcoming school year. 
This predicament arises primarily from the cessation of pandemic-related funding. Efforts to mitigate the impact include potential staff layoffs, with a particular focus on minimizing disruptions to classroom activities. The district is striving to reallocate resources and evaluate each position to address staffing shortfalls and minimize adverse effects. Meanwhile, strategic cuts are being considered, especially in areas where pandemic services are deemed no longer essential or effective. This financial crunch comes despite recent salary increases for teachers, underscoring the complex balancing act of maintaining educational quality amid budget constraints. Frontier Airlines is expanding its offerings with a new nonstop flight from San Diego to El Paso, Texas, starting May 16th, operating three times a week. This edition marks Frontier's sixth nonstop destination from San Diego, part of a broader expansion, including 17 new routes. The service is initially seasonal, with potential for year-round flights based on demand. Despite competition from Southwest Airlines, which also serves this route, Frontier is enhancing its San Diego presence. The airline is boosting seat capacity by 40% in the first half of this year and offers promotional fares starting at $19 under certain conditions. San Diego offers a vibrant array of activities this weekend, from museum discounts to outdoor adventures and cultural events. Thursday marks the last chance for half-off admission at over 70 local museums, including new participants like Legoland, California. Circus Vargas invites families to a spectacle of acrobatics and performances in National City, promising a thrilling experience. Friday welcomes the opening of the flower fields at Carlsbad Ranch, offering a colorful display of ranunculus blossoms and activities through Mother's Day. Comedy fans can catch Kevin Nealon at the American Comedy Company, bringing laughs with his renowned humor. Saturday's Science and Engineering Festival at Snapdragon Stadium promises educational fun with over 100 interactive activities. Bard and music enthusiasts have a variety of workshops and performances to choose from, including mosaic art at Hubble Studios and the gospel celebration by the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Choir. Sunday caps off the weekend with the Food and Wine Festival at Lake House Resort, featuring tastings from local restaurants, breweries, and wineries alongside live music. San Diego Restaurant Week begins offering a chance to explore diverse cuisines with prefix menus across the county. Now on to sports. Cody Bellinger, once a star with the Dodgers, has reportedly signed a three-year, $80 million deal with the Chicago Cubs. This comes a year after the Dodgers decided against offering him arbitration. Bellinger's journey saw highs and lows, he was the 2019 National League MVP and 2017 Rookie of the Year, but his performance dipped significantly in subsequent seasons due to injuries. Despite these challenges, he had a remarkable resurgence with the Cubs in 2023, leading to this lucrative contract. The deal includes opt-out clauses after the first two years, offering flexibility. Bellinger's agent, Scott Boris, attributes his earlier struggles to injuries, but is optimistic about his client's future. This contract represents a significant turn in Bellinger's career, highlighting his potential as a valuable player in Major League Baseball. At the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, teams are closely analyzing the draft prospects. Key quarterbacks like USC's Caleb Williams and North Carolina's Drake May are in the spotlight. Wide receivers, including Ohio State's Marvin Harrison Jr., are also drawing attention, though it's been rumored he won't actually work out. New head coaches and GMs, such as the Chargers' Jim Harbaugh, face scrutiny, and the future of quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins is a hot topic. Each team has unique priorities, 
with some focusing on upgrading specific positions like wide receiver or quarterback, while others negotiate contracts or strategize for the draft. This event is crucial for shaping team rosters and strategies for the upcoming season. But we are hearing rumblings that a lot of the so-called stars won't be showcasing their talent. The Chicago Bears, holding the number one overall pick in the NFL draft for the second consecutive year, face a pivotal decision regarding quarterback Justin Fields' future with the team. General Manager Rand Poles hinted at a potential trade of Fields if the team opts for a quarterback with their top pick, emphasizing the desire to treat Fields fairly in the process. With USC's Caleb Williams being a highly anticipated prospect, the Bears' strategy remains under wraps. Amidst speculation of trading the number one pick again, Poles assures that any decision will prioritize the Bears' best interest without succumbing to external pressures. Fields, after a season of mixed performances and recent controversies over his social media actions, seeks clarity on his position, which Poles acknowledges promising ongoing communication with Fields' representatives. In a comprehensive NFL survey, the Miami Dolphins and Minnesota Vikings emerged as top NFL teams, praised by players across various categories. Conversely, the Kansas City Chiefs and Washington Commanders ranked at the bottom. With over 1,700 players participating, the survey evaluated teams on aspects from facilities to staff. Despite the Chiefs' success on the field, their facilities, nutrition, and training support were criticized. The survey aims not to shame, but to encourage improvements. Notably, the Jacksonville Jaguars made significant progress, climbing to fifth overall after addressing previous criticisms, including facility conditions. I guess it's true. Everything good does come to an end. The Philadelphia Phillies have discontinued their long-standing $1 hot dog night, a decision driven by their commitment to ensuring a positive fan experience at Citizens Bank Park. For over 25 years, this promotion was a fan favorite, offering affordable snacks during games. However, recent events, including fans throwing the hot dogs and other safety concerns, have led to its cancellation. In place of the dollar dogs, the Phillies will offer a two-for-one hot dog deal on select dates in April. This change reflects the organization's effort to manage crowds more effectively and maintain a family-friendly environment. What a bummer. Now you'll have to buy two hot dogs at the same time, just so you can throw them. In top news, the U.S. electric vehicle market is growing, not declining. In the last quarter of 2023, EV sales increased by 40%, hitting over 1 million sales. However, there are some challenges, include high prices, limited charging infrastructure, and complex tax credits. Also, most electric vehicles are pricey, which led Ford to cut prices for the Mach-E and develop cheaper models. The U.S. needs more fast chargers, currently having less than 40,000 against a requirement of 182,000 by 2030. Automakers are investing in expanding this network. Tax credit rules for EVs are intricate, affecting consumer decisions. But leasing has become popular, allowing broader access to tax credits. Despite these issues, the EV market is actually on an upward trajectory. The Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York has received a monumental $1 billion donation from Dr. Ruth Gottsman, enabling the institution to offer free tuition to its students. Dr. Gottsman, a former faculty member and chair of the school's board for 55 years, dedicated this gift to her late husband, David Sandy Gottsman, a notable investor in Berkshire Hathaway. This donation, the largest ever to a medical school in the U.S., is part of the Gottsman's long-standing commitment to healthcare philanthropy. 
Dr. Ruth Gottsman's impactful career at the college includes founding the Adult Literacy Program and the Emily Fisher Landa Center for the Treatment of Learning Disabilities. This transformative gift aims to attract diverse, talented students, relieving them of the burden of educational debt, which averages over $200,000 for medical graduates. Starting this August, all students at the college will benefit from this free tuition. Researchers have developed an app named MindEar, designed to alleviate the symptoms of tinnitus, a condition characterized by a persistent ringing in the ears. In initial trials involving 30 participants, nearly two-thirds reported significant improvements. MindEar incorporates cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, relaxation exercises, and sound therapy, aiming to train the brain to ignore the bothersome noise of tinnitus. The app's development is a response to the challenges of accessing traditional treatments, which often require expensive and scarce psychological services. With plans for larger trials, in collaboration with the University College of London Hospital, MindEar represents a promising step towards accessible treatment for tinnitus sufferers. The recent shakeup at Disney, with Sean Bailey stepping down and David Greenbaum stepping up, reflects broader strategic shifts amid financial pressures and a creative stalemate. Bailey's departure, after a successful tenure with blockbuster live-action remakes, points to changing audience tastes and the challenges of refreshing Disney's cinematic offerings. Greenbaum's promotion suggests a move towards leveraging strong filmmaker relationships and possibly infusing Disney's slate with fresh Arthouse-driven perspectives. This transition comes as Disney navigates succession planning with CEO Bob Iger's eventual departure looming, positioning Alan Bergman and other executives as potential successors. The reshuffle underlines Disney's quest to rejuvenate its film segment while balancing traditional strengths with new creative directions. Aging doesn't have to mean a steep decline in physical and mental health, according to longevity-focused physician, Dr. Peter Atia. In his book, Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity, the author explores how proactive measures can significantly enhance life quality in later years. He emphasizes training over mere exercise, advocating for a deliberate approach to maintaining fitness across decades. This concept is encapsulated in the centenarian decathlon, where individuals tailor their fitness goals to life's practical challenges. Fatih's Performance Center, 10 Squared, aims to equip people for these challenges through focused training in strength, stability, and cardio. However, Atiyah also highlights the importance of emotional health, underscoring that happiness and relationships are crucial at any age. His work suggests that both physical and emotional well-being can flourish with age, provided there's consistent effort towards them. In business news, this week, major retailers like Macy's, Urban Outfitters, Best Buy, and TJX report earnings amidst cautious market sentiments. Shoppers have prioritized essentials over clothing and electronics due to higher grocery and gas prices. Macy's, facing leadership changes and takeover bids, reports on Tuesday. Analysts are wary due to challenging mall traffic and evolving fashion relevance. Urban Outfitters, also reporting Tuesday, grapples with price-sensitive younger customers and is reinvigorating its brand appeal. TJX reports Wednesday, potentially benefiting from a shift to off-price retailing amidst economic pressures. Best Buy, reporting Thursday, might see a demand uptick for electronics as consumers replace aging devices. These reports follow Walmart's indication of lower general merchandise prices, impacting retailer profits. Additionally, results from Vizio, AMC Entertainment, Domino's, Papa John's, Dell, and Lowe's are expected. 
Paramount Global's Wednesday report is notable amid the streaming industry's spending cuts and potential mergers and acquisition activity. The week also brings insights into cloud services demand with Salesforce, Snowflake, Okta, and Workday reporting reflecting on employers' tech budgets and AI demand. MicroStrategy, led by Michael Saylor, has further invested in Bitcoin, purchasing approximately 3,000 tokens for $155.4 million this February. This acquisition, made with cash, boosts the company's total Bitcoin holdings to around 193,000, valued at nearly $10 billion. Saylor, who sees Bitcoin as an inflation hedge and a cash alternative, started this strategy in 2020. Since then, Bitcoin's value has surged by about 460%. The recent purchase's average price was $5,180 zero per token, compared to their overall average holding cost of $31,500. Despite market fluctuations, MicroStrategy shows no signs of selling, with Saylor commenting on Bloomberg TV about the prudence of holding on to a winner. Crestbrook Insurance Company, under Nationwide, is exiting the California home insurance market by June 15th, 2025, ceasing renewals for its wealthy clientele. This decision reflects a broader strategy to streamline Nationwide's operations, focusing on sustainability and competitive pricing across diverse customer needs. Despite Crestbrook's departure affecting a small fraction of Nationwide's portfolio, it underscores the insurance industry's ongoing adjustments to market dynamics. The nationwide shift aims to consolidate its personal insurance offerings under one brand, targeting a broader range of affluent customers. Michael Saylor, the chairman of MicroStrategy, experienced a significant increase in wealth, gaining about $700 million due to a surge in both his company's stock and Bitcoin prices over the last three days. MicroStrategy, primarily valued for its substantial Bitcoin holdings, saw its shares rise by 40%. Saylor, the company's largest shareholder with a 12% stake and a personal Bitcoin ownership of 17,732 units, saw his combined holdings escalate to nearly $3 billion. This financial boost coincides with Bitcoin reaching its highest value since November 2021, emphasizing Saylor's confidence in the digital currency as a solid investment strategy. Major League Pickleball and the Professional Pickleball Association have finalized their merger, marking a significant step for professional pickleball. This unification ends months of negotiations and hostilities creating a combined force in the sport. A substantial $75 million investment accompanies the merger, involving notable entities like SC Holdings and other individual investors, such as Al Tylus and Tom Dundon. While retaining their distinct brands, the leagues will operate under a new holding company, aiming to streamline and enhance professional pickleball. The merger promises a richer calendar of events and significantly increased payouts for players, nearly 250% higher than last year. However, amidst this advancement, players express concerns over unpaid earnings from past tournaments. This consolidation is poised to benefit players, fans, and sponsors, promising a more coherent and exciting future for the sport. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well-being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class. 
with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now, back to the show. Let's talk science. Scientists at the Technical University of Dortmund in Germany have achieved a significant breakthrough in physics by creating a time crystal that lasted about 40 minutes, significantly longer than previous ones which only lasted a few milliseconds. Time crystals, a new state of matter, have atoms arranged in repeating patterns in time, unlike traditional crystals which are arranged in space. This particular time crystal was made using a semiconductor crystal of indium gallium arsenide doped with silicon, cooled to 6 Kelvin, and then exposed to laser light. This process resulted in nuclear spins that oscillated continuously for 40 minutes without decaying, indicating the potential for even longer-lasting time crystals. This discovery could revolutionize quantum computing where time crystals might serve as qubits. This advancement not only challenges our current understanding of physics, but also opens up new avenues for technological innovation. And be sure to stay tuned tomorrow for an explanation of qubits. Yesterday, we had our minds blown talking about time crystals. As promised, today, we explain what a qubit actually is. Qubits, or quantum bits, are the fundamental units of quantum computing, similar to bits in classical computing. While a bit is a binary unit, that can be either zero or one. A qubit differs significantly. It can exist not only as zero or one, but also in a state of superposition, where it embodies both values simultaneously. This unique trait arises from quantum phenomena like superposition and entanglement. Qubits are made from quantum systems, such as electrons or photons, and have two distinct states representing zero and one. They're versatile, being able to undergo incompatible measurements and entangle with other qubits. This ability enables quantum computers to perform complex computations far beyond the scope of classical computers. Qubits come in various forms, including spin, trapped atoms and ions, photons and superconducting circuits, each with unique properties suited for different quantum technologies. In a twist that rekindles interest in the unresolved saga of D.B. Cooper, Rick McCoy III has stepped forward with a claim that could potentially solve the decades-old mystery. According to Rick, his father, Richard Floyd McCoy Jr., a Vietnam veteran and skilled parachutist, was the infamous skyjacker known as D.B. Cooper. This assertion is grounded in a startling confession from Rick's mother, who purportedly admitted to aiding her husband in the audacious 1971 hijacking, where Cooper parachuted into the night with $200,000 and disappeared. Richard McCoy Jr. was no stranger to the law, having been apprehended for a similar hijacking in 1972, which quickly led to his capture. This earlier crime ended in his escape from prison and death in a police confrontation in 1974. Rick McCoy's revelation introduces a familial dimension to the D.B. Cooper case, implicating his mother as an accomplice and suggesting a deeper conspiracy. The FBI, intrigued by this new lead, has reopened the investigation into Cooper's identity. With Rick providing DNA evidence in an attempt to validate his claims, this development offers a glimmer of hope in unraveling one of aviation history's most enduring mysteries. Apple has decided to terminate its decade-long endeavor to create its own electric vehicle, known as Project Titan, redirecting its focus towards generative artificial intelligence. The move reflects a strategic pivot amid evolving industry challenges and competitive pressures, particularly from Tesla's advancements. While some Project Titan employees will transition to AI projects, many will not. 
This shift underscores Apple's recalibration of priorities towards areas like AI, believed to offer more immediate synergies with its core consumer electronics business. The cancellation marks a significant shift from Apple's initial ambitions in autonomous driving, highlighting the complexities of automotive manufacturing and the competitive landscape. Researchers at Armit University in Australia have developed a groundbreaking 3D printed titanium they call metamaterial that could revolutionize the engineering field. Inspired by the natural structures of plants and coral, this metamaterial addresses the long-standing challenge of metal alloys cracking under pressure. The team's innovative design features lattice-like structures with hollow struts, enhanced by a thin band to evenly distribute stress, avoiding weak points. Utilizing advanced powder bed fusion technology, they created a material that outperforms traditional alloys in strength and temperature resistance. This new material not only withstands more weight, but also high temperatures, making it ideal for aerospace engineering and potentially firefighting drones. Its hollow structure is also seen as beneficial for human bone implants, promoting cell regrowth and integration with the body. Although not yet widely accessible, technological advancements may soon allow broader application of this transformative metamaterial. And in entertainment news, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav just announced a significant shift in streaming strategy, confirming that HBO Max will be bundled with a new sports streaming service launching this fall in partnership with Disney and Fox. This move aligns with Zaslav's long-standing advocacy for bundling to simplify consumer experiences and drive business growth. The bundling strategy, reflecting a pivot back to traditional cable bundle benefits, aims to streamline access to diverse content across multiple platforms. Despite some controversial decisions, Zaslav's approach has led to profitability in the Warner Brothers Discovery streaming segment, signaling potential future savings for consumers through more integrated streaming services. Kevin Costner, renowned for his roles in Westerns, is set to captivate audiences with his latest project, Horizon, an American saga. This ambitious cinematic endeavor, directed, co-written, and starring Costner, unfolds across four separate movies. The saga, set in the post-Civil War era, promises a fresh perspective on Westerns, moving away from the conventional town-based narratives. Costner describes this project as the biggest struggle of his career, both in ambition and budget. The star-studded cast includes Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington, Gina Malone, and more. The story explores the tumultuous period of the Civil War from 1861 to 1865, delving into the experiences of various families and individuals during this critical time in American history. The first chapter of this epic tale is set to release in theaters on June 28th, followed by the second chapter on August 16th. Fans of Costner and Westerns alike eagerly await this groundbreaking series, but we are all a little peeved that he bailed on the finale of Yellowstone, one of the best drama series of the last 20 years. Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor respond to director Doug Lyman's boycott of the Roadhouse remake amidst the film's release controversy. Gyllenhaal, playing Dalton, acknowledges Lyman's advocacy for theatrical releases, but emphasizes Amazon's clarity on the film being streaming only. He advocates for broad viewership in changing times, appreciating Lyman's passion for cinema. McGregor, playing Knox, also supports theater releases but recognizes the business aspect, expressing a wish to discuss the release plans with Amazon's CEO, Jeff Bezos. The controversy stems from Lyman's critique of Amazon's decision for a streaming release over a theater release 
despite prior discussions of a possible theatrical run. Roadhouse is set to release on Amazon March 21st. Sony Pictures has made a groundbreaking move by signing a deal with the Beatles and Apple to create four interconnected films, each spotlighting a member of the iconic band. Directed by Sam Mendes, the ambitious plan is to release all four movies in 2027. This unprecedented project aims to bring the Beatles story to the big screen in a way that honors their legacy, exploring the individual journeys of the Fab Four. The films are expected to start production in mid-2025 in the United Kingdom. This strategy marks a bold approach in film distribution and storytelling, reflecting Sony's commitment to innovation and the enduring appeal of the Beatles' music and cultural impact. Warner Brothers executives Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi are making bold moves, courting big names like Tom Cruise and Leonardo DiCaprio, and I and Quentin Tarantino's next project. In a strategic partnership with Tom Cruise, they discussed potential projects, including a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow and Tarantino's The Movie Critic. Their aggressive strategy includes attracting A-list directors and stars, underlined by a non-exclusive deal with Cruise and a lucrative contract for DiCaprio's next film. Warner Brothers is also granting unusual concessions, like copyright returns to directors, signaling a willingness to spend, to secure top talent. This approach is part of a broader strategy, potentially aimed at enhancing Warner Brothers' value ahead of possible corporate sales or mergers. Well, alrighty folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from the always motivating, Chuck Norris. And Mr. Norris said, a lot of people give up just before they're about to make it. And you never know when that next obstacle is going to be the last one. Don't give up, we're almost there. And that's a wrap for this morning. Have an amazing day, my good friends. Thanks for tuning in.